Hi everyone, in this video we will try to understand the different space for constraints and check the major constraint update between Blender 2.8 and Blender 2.9. Before we get started, I'd like to thank you for the 25,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. That means a lot. To celebrate this and thank you, I will be running a 25% discount on all my courses exclusively on my Gumroad page. Use the code P2Design to get 25% off until the 1st of February. While my rigging post was recorded in Blender 2.8, it is still up to date with Blender 2.9. And while Blender rigging system get updated under the hood, Blender rigging principles and process have been the same for over a decade now. And it will probably be the same in the future whether we switch to node-based constraint or not. Because whether you're in Blender or Maya, the core rigging principles and system are the same. So if you want to learn rigging or improve your rigging skill, you should start now. So let's get started and see what has changed on those rigging constraints. For this video, I'm working in Blender 2.92 beta version. There are some UI modifications. On 2.8, when a constraint was undefined, it was in red. Now it's only its icons that turn to red. The general checkbox and button size has changed, which makes it more readable. To reorder the constraint, you just have to drag and drop them instead of clicking the arrow. Some more complex constraints have been organized with submenu that make them more readable. Most of the update we'll talk about concern the transform constraint. To better illustrate it, I have created a rig with three bones, bone A and B, and a root bone. The bone A is a child of the root bone. I've created custom shape showing the orientation of bone A and B in their local space. I've just added a copy location constraint to the bone B. We now need to define a target. So we will source our armature object and inside this object, the bone A. The target defines the bone constraining and the owner, the current bone, that has the constraint or that is constrained. By default, the target and owner are set to world space. It means that whatever the position of the A bone in world space, the B bone will have exactly the same position. The transformation is changing the location. The position is the result of this transformation. Let's switch both owner and target to local space. Now the resulting position of bone B is its current position in his local space, plus any location transformation we apply directly to bone A, manipulating directly the bone A. If I manipulate the root bone to move bone A, bone B won't move. If I change the orientation of bone A rotating the root bone, then when I move the bone A in its local space, the bone B will follow the same motion in its local space. If I move bone A on the y-axis, bone B will move on the y-axis. Note that rotating bone B prior to moving bone A won't change anything. To keep it simple, you have to consider that location is applied before rotation. So rotating a bone first and then playing with its location value won't change the behavior of those location values. When a copy location constraint is applied to a bone, you can no longer manipulate this bone location directly. To be able to move it, you need to activate the offset option. This way, the constraint no longer replaces the location of the bone, but it's added on top of this, meaning that if I move the bone by one blender unit on its y-axis, and then I use the target bone and move it by minus one unit on its y-axis, the resulting position of the bone will be like I haven't moved it. It's very useful when using the local space to local space relationship. If I now switch to local space with parent, moving the root bone will also make the bone be moving. 
If I move the root bone along the y-axis of the bone A, the bone B will move also along its y-axis. The tricky part here is that rotating the root bone and then moving the A bone on its local y-axis won't make the bone B moving only in its local y-axis. It will be also moving on its x-axis or z-axis if needed, mimicking the motion of the bone A in space. While if I switch back to local space to local space, when I move the A bone on its y-axis, the B bone move on its y-axis. So the transformation of the parent target also affects the target. So let's now switch to pose space. If I move the A bone onto the global Z axis, then the B bone is moving into its local Z axis. So it's exactly as if I was using a world space to local space. When I move the first bone on the Z world space, the other bone move into its Z local space. And the thing is that if I get back to post space, I rotate the root bone to change the orientation of the first bone, it does behave exactly the same. When I move it along the world space axis, it influences the B bone local space axis. So it's exactly as using world space. So what's the difference? I've created this geometry to showcase you the orientation of the armature object. I will go into object mode and rotate the armature. So now the y-axis of the armature is pointing up. It's aligned with the world z-axis. If I now go into pose mode and move bone A following the world z-axis, the B bone will move along its local y-axis. So the pose space is the local space of the armature object, not the bones inside the armature. Let's give a try to custom space. It's a little tricky even for me, so I will try to make you believe I understand what I'm saying. First in object mode, I will cancel the rotation of both my armature and my armature orientation object. Then I will go onto my constraint and for the target, I will switch to custom space. So the constraint turned to red because we have to specify a custom space object and I will select my armature orientation object. As soon as I do it, I can see my bone getting offset by the same distance we have between our object and the origin of our blender scene. If I now select my custom space object and get rid of any transformation, my constraint bone behave as if it was constrained by a target that is in world space. Our custom space is aligned with the world space. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. I will hide every bones but the one with the constraint. The 3D cursor represents its original position. The armature origin point is aligned with the world origin. Now as I move away my custom space object negatively on the X axis, my B bone will move away on its positive x-axis because the origin of our bone B is relative to the position of this custom shape. By default, the position of the bone B is relative to the origin of the armature. But now the origin of the armature is relative to the position of this armature custom space. So if I move the armature object on the x-axis toward this custom space object, now my constraint bone will also get closer to its original pose. So the important thing is not the position of the custom shape object, but the position of the armature relative to this custom shape object. And as the armature is away by plus 2.8 blender unit on its X axis from this custom space object, so is the offset on the constraint bone. I know it's pretty tricky and to be honest, since I haven't used this feature yet, I don't exactly know what to do with this. Hopefully it's a bit clearer and I didn't make myself ridiculous with this one. 
One of the most useful constraints in Blender is the copy rotation constraint. And it's especially useful whenever you use it in local space to local space with the offset option that allow you to take the control of the constraint bone. It's perfect to rig fingers, for example. But in Blender 2.9, the offset checkbox is no longer here. So if I add the copy rotation to my B bone and then switch to local space to local space, it will follow the rotation of the A bone, but I can no longer rotate it. To be able to manipulate my constraint bone, I simply need to go into the mix options. In this menu, I will find my offset option and so the bone will behave as in Blender 2.8 when we check the offset option. But when you are using multiple constraints, the offset option can lead to bugs. That's why it is set to legacy and probably a way and probably an option that will be removed. So if you are using only one copy rotation constraint, you can use the add option without the problem. There are also two other new options in the mix mode the after and before original. To be able to understand their benefit, we need to have another constraint. So we need to have another bone. So I have created this bone called A2 and I will add a copy rotation constraint onto our B bone and I will switch it to local space to local space. If I try to rotate the A bone, nothing will happen because the A2 bone constraint is set to replace and since it's the last in the constraint stack, it's the last constraint read and it overrides the first one and says I don't rotate. But if I change the blending mode to add, for example, I can rotate both controllers and they will influence the latest controller. Let's see the other mix mode. If I rotate A2 on its local X, B bones rotate around its local X. But now if I rotate first the A bone by 90 degree on the Y axis, it will change the orientation of the B bone. And since we are using local space to local space, rotating A2 around its local X axis will make B rotate along its X local axis. And we will get the same result whether we are using the add method or after original method. Because in the end, our constraint is already after the original. It's the last constraint in the stack. But if we switch to the before method, now we have a different behavior. B bone rotate as if it was a child of the A2 bone. It doesn't matter whether we have changed its orientation before with A bone, A2 bone kind of override the first rotation as if it was a parent and the A bone was a constraint that is applied after it. And this could generate but also solve a lot of gimbal lock problems and it increased the flexibility of this constraint. One of the other features we have also is the possibility to change the order the euler rotation of the target bone is interpreted. Again, to be able to avoid gimbal lock and optimize the constraint. If you want to learn more about gimbal lock and learn how to use those constraints in the context of character rigging, I advise you to jump into my course. The copy scale constraint has now a make uniform option. Whether you scale the targets in a non-uniform matter, the other bone will be scaled on all its axes, trying to match the volume of the target bone. The offset option allows you to scale the owner of the constraint on top of the current constraint, as in Blender 2.8, and the additive option will change the behavior of multiple scaling constraint or multiple scaling operation. If I switch both constraint to additive, if I scale the bone A by 2, the bone B will scale by 2. But then if I scale the bone A2 by 1.5, the bone B will be scaled by 2.5. The first bone was scaled of plus 1 
to 2 and the second bone of plus 0.5 to 1.5. So we have added 1 plus 0.5 on the B bone, setting its overall scale to 2.5, while by default scaling is mixed through a multiplication. So if I get rid of the additive option, it will be a scale of 2 multiplied by a scale of 1.5 equal a scale of 3. You can even influence those factors or those values using the power setup. It will add a power function to the value, so a power of 2 on a scale of 2 will scale to 4. A power of 0 will always output a result of 1. This way you can change the easing of the constraint. The last updated transform constraint is the copy transformation constraint. It's a very powerful constraint that allows you to remap a transform channel from the target onto another transform channel from the owner. The new feature is that by default it was set to add previously, now you can set it to replace. This way you will kind of lock any other transformation of the owner. This is all I have with this video. I'm thinking about making a video about all Blender constraints. I wanted to thank you all again for your support and especially all the people that have taken the rigging course. I've received tons of incredible feedback and this is really encouraging and heartwarming. Thank you again and I'll see you very very soon.